Hello, I'm the dev, Alan Derry, and I'm going to show you what has changed in my game, more PG Dev Tycoon, in the last two months, my last video. Last time I talked about the new milestone I'm going to reach, in which the main characters of the players will already be created, as well as their battles with monsters within the real game world, and I almost did it. However, in the process, a lot of additional work rose, which did not plan, but which all somehow needed both by the game itself and by this milestone in particular. First of all, I create a temporary game world. Temporary, because in the future I plan to add the ability to edit terrain, create mountains and plains, add a new lands. Uh, that's not a part of this milestone, so for now we are playing on this version that I created myself. Skipping unnecessary technical information, the next step was the development of factions. Factions have come to replace the races that I originally wanted to do. So, what are factions and why are they needed? A faction is a group of units, characters, NPCs or monsters that have some kind of shared properties. Factions can have factional skills that all members of the faction will have, for example some kind of passive skill. Faction members can gain additional faction stats, like attack power or defense or speed. Factions are also needed to determine the relationship of some to others, for example, pirates can fight with everyone except bandits, or, in case of playable factions, you can make an alliance of red and blue against white and yellow, where each faction will have its own respawn point, but when they meet they will or will not fight. Also later you can create faction quests, items, embassies can trade to some players but attack some other players. Well, for fun you can create a playable faction of exclusively female or male characters. Players will belong to one of the factions when creating character, and joining or changing factions is not planned. Joining clans is planned for social component, but this is a later feature to do. In your game world you can use a single playable faction if you don't want a factional PvP, or you can create an unlimited number of factions, because I don't plan to limit your imagination in the game. Alright, the next thing I needed to work on was character classes. On this screen we can design our classes just like we designed monsters. We choose what types of weapon a class can own, customize its stats and skills. We can also exclude the availability of this class for some factions, as well as block any gender. The last type of the designer is the equipment that the player receives when creating character. I didn't plan to make items in this milestone. But all the solutions without them were long in implementation and had to be redone very soon, so I decided not to waste time on useless things and expand the milestone to include items in it. I'll show the item editor in a minute, but for now I'll finish with the class screen by showing pre-prepared equipment items. On the equipment tab you can give the characters absolutely any item in any quantity. If you can use them immediately, they will be displayed on the previous screen as well as the total stats of the character can be seen in the stats tab. Let's look at the item editor now. All items are divided into six categories. The weapon is quite obvious. Each item contains stats in a model. The equipment by default has a helmet, torso, pants, gloves and boots, but in the near future I will add the ability to create any other types right inside the game. For example, you can create slots for a clock, shoulder pads, knee pads, belts and so on, if you want so. Or remove the default ones and leave a single slot for a complete set. The accessories by default can be a ring or a necklace, but as well as the equipment types, you can add any number of new types of accessories. The accessories differ from equipment in two main ways. Firstly, they do not have a model so you can create anything at all that the character can receive and equip. For example, a talisman, a soul stone, chains, arrows, trophies and so on. Secondly, you can determine for yourself how many items of the same type can be equipped at the same time. By default, a character can put on two rings, but if you want to put 20 on all of your fingers at once, then nothing prevents you. Consumable items in the current milestone will not be fully implemented, but in the future it will be an item containing any skills at your discretion. It can be health potions, buffs, it can be bombs, or it can be special attacks. Each consumable item will be consumed when applied, as well as have its own cooldown, 
which, if desired, can conflict with other items in such a way that using, for example, a weak health potion also does not allow using a strong potion right after it. Currencies are a special type of item that can be the price of merchants. If you want to make an evental, regional, factional or PvP currency, you can. The MISC tab can include either completely useless items that can only be sold to buyers, either material items used for crafting, or quest items, or anything else uncategorized. There is no limit on items, and for the convenience of searching, all kinds of filters and options for sorting and displaying item parameters are implemented. If you noticed, there is a bio tab on each screen that allows you to add descriptions to items, factions, classes and so on. It is not necessary to fill it out, but the presence or absence of lore in your game will be organically integrated into the process of attracting new players. There will be other ways to attract players, so you don't need to worry or fill out the every bio tab with anything, but the players who do this will be rewarded a little. Well. Since we have items, then there should be a drop from monsters, right? The monster designer has been updated and the drop list settings tab has been worked out. Now you can assign which items and what quantity and with what chances the monsters will drop out when they are killed. You can also limit certain drop positions by the level of the killed monster. What for the other improvements? Of course, monsters also support factions. Also, throughout the game, the function of unlocking skills by level is implemented, so that your characters become stronger as they progress. The item selection windows and its tooltips are implemented, which I have repeatedly shown throughout the video. And then I have a new screen of the selected character, which I will show you in the next video. I decided to split all my work into two videos, since I hadn't recorded anything for a long time, and there was quite a lot of content. I'm close to completing the milestone, and in the next video I will show you exactly the gameplay itself, how the characters spawn and do their usual MMORPG business, farming experience and items. So stay tuned! If you have any questions, write it in the comments, or visit my Discord with any questions and suggestions. I remind you that the previous build with the arena is available to all tier 2 subscribers of Patreon. And the updated build will also be immediately available as soon as I finish the milestone. Wishlist the game, link in the description, and see you in the next video!